Hi, my name is John Bergman. I'm one of the pioneers of the flipped classroom movement. There's a lot of misunderstanding about the flipped classroom. A lot of people, when they hear about the flipped classroom, they say, oh, that's just homework on videos and then worksheets in class. And though that could be it, the reality is it's about the best use of your face-to-face -face class time. Let me tell you a story. I was presenting on the flipped classroom to a group of educators, and these three teachers came up to me afterwards and they said, John, we're in, we want to flip our class. And I said, cool, so, so tell me, what do you guys do? And they said, we're the PE department. I looked at them and I said, what? <laughs> the PE department? And they told me this story. I said, when you ask that question, what's the best use of your face-to-face -face class time? They told me, we want our students to move their bodies. And then they said this, we spend far too much time telling our students how to move their bodies. So they make these short videos so that they can maximize class time. You see, the key to the flipped classroom is maximizing the face-to-face -face class time. For 24 years, I was a high school science teacher. And in my science class, I was frustrated with not having enough time for my kids to do hands-on activities and also for them to get help on, I'll call it the hard stuff. You see, because what I was doing is I would send them home to do homework and they'd get stuck and they wouldn't get, have any help because their parents couldn't help say on high school chemistry. And so when they went home, they couldn't do it. So of course, when we flipped the class, there was a lot more time for me, the expert, to help the student with their class. So, so for me, the way I answered that question as a high school chemistry teacher was I wanted my students to do more experiments and also to get help on the more difficult concepts. But then my PE teacher friends, they had a different answer to that question. What's the best use of your face-to-face -face class time? So I want to really encourage you to answer that question for yourself. What is the best use of your face-to-face -face class time? And as you answer that, I think you're going to come to the conclusion that it's, well, it's not you standing up in front of your students and yakking at them, doing the lecture thing. Because you can move the direct instruction piece, if you will, the lecture, into the individual space where the students can watch them and consume them at the pace that makes sense to them. Haven't you all sat in a lecture room or a class and the teacher is going on and, and on and maybe even on and maybe you're processing it but then all of a sudden you look up and you go, you're trying to take notes and, and, and you look up and you're lost. What, what are you going to do now? You see, the nice thing about um, uh, content on videos, of course, is that there's a pause and a rewind button because if you, if you get lost, well, then you can go back and rewind. This was especially poignant for me when I was uh, teaching in the flip classroom. And my daughter, uh, Katie, she was uh, in my class, taking my class, the flip classroom. And, and she was watching a video at home of me teaching, which, by the way, is weird. <laughs> but she was watching a video of me. And then she paused the video and she turned to me and she said, Dad, I love the flip classroom. And I said, how come? She says, because I get to pause you. <laughs> which was kind of, it's a, wait, no, actually it was good, and she was saying it nicely, but the, I think it was funny that she gets to pause her dad. She wanted to pause and rewind her dad because she needed uh, help. Now, I will give you a couple pieces of advice, too, to those of you who are considering flipping your class. It's very important, maybe the biggest mistake, let me pause, maybe the biggest mistake I see teachers make is they don't teach their students how to watch the videos. They just say, well, I'm going to say, hey, watch this video and then come to class. No, you must teach them how to watch the video. What do I mean by that? Well, students know how to watch Spider-Man. That doesn't mean they know how to watch an instructional video on, say, math or PE or whatever it might be. Take some time to teach them how to interact with the video. So for me, as a high school teacher, I spent a week teaching my students how to watch the videos. The first day, we watched it on the big screen. The next day, on devices. We, I essentially was teaching them how to take notes. I was in a sixth grade class recently in uh, Fort Worth, Texas area, and I had a chance to talk with this teacher. And as we were talking about how he set his students up to prepare, he spent three weeks teaching his kids how to watch videos. I had little guys, I had bigger guys, I think it makes sense. So make sure that you take time to teach your students how to watch instructional video content. Otherwise, they're going to go home and they may watch it, but that doesn't mean they're going to actually get things out of it. And the second thing I would say about the video content, make sure that you build in some interactivity. Pause, write questions, take notes. There's lots of ways uh, to build an interactivity. But if you don't build in the interactivity, then it won't work. I want to also tell you about a couple of um, resources for you. Um, Aaron Sams and I have co-written two books. The first one, Flip Your Classroom, where it introduces the idea of the flipped classroom and also the flipped mastery model, where, where students work asynchronously through content. Um, and I really believe the flipped I really believe the Flip Mastery Classroom is very, very powerful. And then just this week, we've released a second book called Flipped Learning, Gateway to Student Engagement. This book 
um, tells the stories of teachers who've moved um, really beyond the flipped classroom. They started with the flipped classroom and they've moved beyond to a second version or a second iteration, if you will, that we like to call flipped learning. Flipped learning is the, is the advanced version of the flipped class, if you will. And this book takes you through those teachers and their stories as we learn from them about how they have really transformed their class from a more you know, teacher-centric classroom into a learner-centered classroom of the future.